Let's give tips for every troop in clan capitals. Let's start simple with the Super Barbarian and then move our way up the troops in the order that they are unlocked. Super Barbarians can be used to clear the outside buildings to expand the placement map. This is very good at the early stages of any raid during raid weekend on any district. This is great in terms of funneling. This is not the most optimal way of using them, but you can use a tank to tank for them in order to remove defenses and buildings while they're being tanked for. They can also be used to look for traps such as log traps and mega mines and small mines. This will allow you to look for traps for those glass cannon troops. Now sneaky archers come in group of five. This means that you will want to take advantage of their invisibility and can expand the placement map. Keep in mind though that you do need to look for traps. If you don't, they're going to be sent to the Shadow Realm. So you need to make sure that you are looking for traps by using something like the Super Barbarians. So you mainly want to use them to hit over buildings and let them snipe. Of course, the other thing that you should consider is that you should have a tank in front of them. As even a Super Barbarian can be enough of a tank against certain defenses. You may want to use the Super Archers in a sort of surgical attack where you chip away at buildings and making it far easier. But the other thing that you should consider is that if you do have a tank in front of them, you want to make sure that you take full advantage of that tank just before or at least a little bit before the invisibility wears off so you can get the most from your sneaky archers invisible invisible ability the super giant's main goal is to tank defenses this is perfect for glass cannon troops such as super wizards and sneaky archers or some tankier ones such as the raid cards they also have a huge viability with heal spell this provides support for not only them, but also for the troops behind them. Not only that, but they can be used to distract defenses such as the Capitol Hall's attack, which can be really devastating to glass cannons, but can be very useful to distract it with something like a low cost tank, such as a super giant, making it very good to remove the Capitol Hall, especially early on when all the buildings are close together, now, the Battle Ram is the closest thing we'll get to a wall breaker in the clan capitals. Its main use is, well, to break down walls. It will target buildings from the outside. Clearly as well, they are going to be very weak right after if they cannot get to a wall. But they will prioritize buildings behind walls. If there isn't any, it will really target for the nearest building that is behind a wall. The regular barbarians that come from the battle ram aren't really great outside of maybe having them for distraction, but they can work very, very well. And this can be plugged into any army comp because of its five housing space cost. Similar to sneaky archers, minion horde comes in groups of five. They can be used as well to expand the placement map. Since they are an air troop, they're hit by very limited buildings, so it makes it very easy for them to do so. Of course, they are weak to air targeting defenses, which means you can actually still overwhelm them by using a couple groups of them. While this isn't ideal, it can be very useful. But of course, their best use is going to be pairing them up with the use of the Flying Fortress and Rocket Balloons. This is a really good strategy that can easily net you a lot of percentage later on in the raid. So you may want to consider using them. They are, however, extremely weak to splash air targeting defenses. So try to keep that in mind when you're using them. Super Wizards can provide a huge amount of chain damage if they can hit more than two buildings. The best way to take advantage of them is by basically using them against clumped up buildings like this. If you can have something distracting for them, like super giants, you can bring in the use of super wizards underneath the heel to absolutely obliterate the core of the base. It is insane how powerful this is, and it's incredibly useful at the early stages. 
But not only that, since they can hit up to 10 targets at once, but they are a glass cannon troop. So try to make sure that you have a tank in front of them, such as the super giant. You should bring in super barbarians to look for any sort of traps that could be potentially lethal to the super wizard, such as the mega mine. So make sure that you bring something to trip the trap. Now, rocket balloons can deal a massive amount of damage and can get through defenses quicker. However, they are fragile. So their best use case is to sprinkle them in. They come in groups of two, so it's really easy to snipe buildings down by using them. Make sure though they have a tank, such as the Flying Fortress. This can easily allow you to remove these. And alongside that, this is a very good pairing with the, with the regular minions or the minion horror, and of course the Flying Fortress strategy. Though you should try to mainly focus on using your rocket balloons to clear stuff like the air bombs, air defenses, the rapid rockets, air defenses, and really anything that hits air because you can easily use them to remove them for your main tank, the Flying Fortress. Now, skeleton barrels come in groups of three, which means this, this will give you 36 skeletons per group. The skeleton barrels pretty much act like the skeleton barrels in the home village during the seasonal events. They will pop when they get to defenses. They are weak to splash buildings, but they can easily clear point defenses or defenses and buildings that, of course, can't defend themselves, such as the air defense. But, of course, the biggest thing that they are really good at is for distraction. They can easily distract point defenses for certain groups. While they are going to be fairly weak to splash defenses, such as the air bombs, they are going to be perfect distraction for the Flying Fortress against something like a single target Inferno, making this a very viable troop to bring, at least if you bring a couple of them. And of course, the skeletons have that added benefit of then going to other buildings. Uh, and another really good thing about them is underneath Rage, Skeleton Barrels do incredibly well. And the Flying Fortress is one of the most unique troops of all of them, but it provides as a damage dealer and tank. It will only go for defenses. It also has two very unique abilities. One, it will spawn units while it's being hit. The Flying Fortress pairs up really nicely with stuff like the Rocket Balloon, Skeleton Barrel, and even the minions, which can provide a ton of support. Even a rage spell and heal can be very effective at making sure this is able to stay alive for a lot longer. The other thing, though, that you should consider, though, is lightning spells. Lightning spells are great, especially at making sure single target infernos do not deal too much damage. Their other ability is upon death, where they spawn 30 skeletons from the Flying Fortress, which can be great against point defenses. So you should try to consider taking advantage of it against single target infernos to possibly remove them or just deal enough damage to easily snipe them. Well, many of you haven't passed this point. It's some good information to know to master these troops going forward. But not only that, you should consider subscribing to the channel and ringing the bell for more high quality content just like this in the future so you don't miss it. Raid carts are the mixtures of two different troops, the cannon cart and four regular barbarians. The raid cart is incredibly good behind tanks, such as the Super P.E.K.K.A. where I think the most viability is, and of course Super Giants. But this troop is extremely good and it doesn't really need a ton of support outside of just having a tank. They deal a lot of damage, and their first shot to a defense is very quick. They also have their special ability where they do have a temporary amount of HP. So you might want to take advantage of that, but they do have a good amount of HP where they synergize well with a heal spell. And the Super P.E.K.K.A.'s main goal is to tank. They are incredibly good at doing this, but also alongside that, they are just fantastic at dealing high amounts of damage. They work incredibly well as a tank. 
so you should treat them as such. Heal works well with them, even the Rage spell does as well, so you should try to take advantage of them as much as possible. It just makes it so much easier as you start to move through. Even other support units, such as the Hog Raiders, are incredibly good with them and can provide a ton of synergy if you use them correctly. But the biggest thing as well is that they do need a lot of support despite their H their high HP. So you should try to bring support units like the Raid Carts or even other ones such as Super Barbarians, Sneaky Archers, and even the Super Wizards, which will provide a lot of support. The Hog Raiders are made up of two different troops, the Hog Riders and the Hog Gliders. These troops work incredibly well when paired up with practically any tank, very specifically though, the Flying Fortress and the Mountain Golem. They're really good at basically focusing on stunning buildings. This is really good, especially for things like single target infernos. Super Dragon's main goal is to deal a lot of damage to buildings, and they're one of the only troops that you can basically use alone. But the main goal that you should be doing is looking for buildings that are fairly close together. They provide a lot of support underneath Rage, and they can easily clear through a large amount of structures. Keep in mind though that they are extremely weak to a lot of air attacks, or at least a lot of air targeting defenses, and their ability really allows them to clear through a lot of buildings alone, so they don't need a ton of support, but of course, you should try to use them in only very specific areas where you can hit multiple buildings from that one touching building. This is really good in certain situations, but of course, it's going to be very dependent depending on the base. And of course, the Mountain Golem. One of the tankiest, if not the tankiest troop in Clash of Clans. It doesn't need any support due to its high HP and high damage, but it's really slow. So you have to keep that in mind. So using rage spells with it really will speed it up and deal a ton of damage so you really shouldn't ignore it. It will basically one-shot everything underneath the Rage, and for the most part, two to three shot most bigger buildings. But of course, upon death, it will also deal death damage. It will break into five different rocks, dealing 500 damage, which can actually benefit from using a lightning spell around surrounding buildings you may want to remove. But overall, it is a good way to get some extra damage and of course maybe even remove other structures upon death. Now hopefully this video will help you out understanding all the troops as you go from the very beginning capital peak level 1 all the way to level 10. If you want to check out my video on the best attacks to use at Town Hall 13, I would highly recommend checking it out over here and consider subscribing to the channel right here and I will be catching you guys in the next video. Corrupt, signing out.